Agency in Motion Continuing Education Series on Building, Operating, and Managing Agencies in the 21st Century. Today's topic of conversation centers around 25 ways as an insurance agent or broker to keep a fill pipeline and a full calendar. Leads are the lifeblood of any agency, but when you're talking about things like insurance, that's not an excitement or impulse buy, you need to make sure that you do everything that you possibly can to keep that pipeline filled and that calendar full as you're building that book of business or you're building that business. First up, new business registration websites. I'm not sure in all 50 states, but Mo should have a website that displays every new business that gets registered. Because of COVID, people are either voluntarily or involuntarily on the move now. Uh, there's a lot of new businesses that were registered over the past 12 months. So what that means for you is that when you're dealing with new business owners, they do have financial needs. Referral kits for clients. This goes beyond just asking for the referral. This is developing a referral kit that makes it very, very easy for your clients to refer over. The easier that you make it, more referrals that you're going to get. Vice versa, the harder that you make it, the least amount of, or the less amount of referrals that you're going to get. So developing that referral kit will help. Raffling off something different or cool. Collecting people's information on raffle forms creates lead generation opportunities. But make sure it's both cost effective and intriguing enough to strike up the conversation about the actual product and create that general interest and general demand. Up next is employee financial wellness. This is one of the hottest conversations, hottest topics, hot, hottest sectors out there right now. So if you know anyone who works at a company with other employees, ask them about setting up to give away free information. Make it clear this is not pressure. This is not sales. What you want to do is you want to get information in front of them that can help them. Pitch it like you're doing them a favor, not the other way around. What about new home purchases? The real estate market is red hot right now with new homes being purchased. So new homeowners are a great target for financial products and services. Since the transactions are generally public information, it's, easy, it's easily accessible. When you're looking at new home purchases, you immediately find some general demand or some perceived general demand for your product. So new home purchases are a great um, target to go af after for new leads. What about marriage engagement announcements? These are people that are starting to commit. When you talk about owning a home, that's a commitment. When you're talking about marriage, that's a commitment. That's the type of people you're looking to do business with. A lot of people who get married or engaged, they put out announcements in you know, various sources and media. These couples are the perfect target for financial services because they're entering a new life stage or a new part of the life cycle and they should be more receptive to conversations about what you have to offer. What about just emailing your existing clients? Are you sending out a monthly newsletter right now? Well, if not, you're missing a great way to stay in contact with your customers and generate new leads. Each newsletter is a chance for you to get back in front of people and ask for referrals, cross-sell new products, you know, do a lot of things, but most importantly, stay in front of your clients. Exchange leads with other businesses. Remember, leads themselves, depending on how you generate those, can be an expensive proposition for the business, the business owner. When you're looking at your agency or your book of business, whatever you're building, when you start to exchange leads with other local business owners around you, that's a great way for you guys to kind of pull resources and everybody to extract value out of the pool. Your Facebook news feed, you know, everybody is posting um, things online every day. Some of this stuff has to do with what's going on in their personal life. I'm not saying your news feed is the place to go when you need to make a sale today, but if you're an avid Facebook user and you pay attention, you realize that your news feed is full of sales opportunity. People having babies, getting married, buying cars, buying houses, et cetera. What about hooking up with accountants? A recommendation from an accountant is very powerful. It's like your dentist recommending a toothbrush. It takes more than a casual relationship to an accountant to generate leads, but if you can gain their trust and help their business, accountants can be a really great source of leads for you. Also, what about just hiring an appointment setter to do some of that upfront whittling down of raw data to get you the 
interested parties and the qualified booked appointments that you're looking for. If you really want someone in your agency to be dialing out all day long, hire someone specifically for that purpose and set it up to where when they do better in terms of the results, their pay is you know, better as well. Alumni database. Does your college or high school have an alumni database? If so, it's a great place to look for potential people to reach out to. Where I went to school, they even let you search by industry, job title, location. So it could be a gold mine and things like LinkedIn is a great place to go for alumni databases and find people uh, that went to your same school. Remember, just that common uh, affiliation, that common association will usually buy you enough time to introduce what you're doing. And remember, when you introduce what you're doing, you need to come from the why perspective so they can buy in first. Cell phone camera. This is a way that you can use your cell phone camera and it's an awesome way to keep track of new leads. While you're driving around walking, you see a new business that would be good to reach out to, just snap a picture of the storefront or the vehicle so you can read their contact information. If you really want to catch their attention, send them an email with the image attached. Stand out. Real estate agents, just like accountants, you know, real estate agents are another group of people that could be a great benefit in terms of building the relationship for your business. For obvious reasons, real estate agents can be a big source of lead generation for you. Remember that real estate agents are just like you. The only thing they need is to have more success, is to have more leads. Give them leads and they'll give them back to you. Remember, make sure it's a mutually beneficial relationship and it should prosper on both sides. Get more X dates. What does that mean? Well, in my opinion, asking for X dates is one of the most underutilized weapons in the partner's arsenal. The thing I love about asking for X dates, it's not pushy. You're telling the person, hey, I want to help you with your money, but only when it's important to you. How could you be collecting more X dates every single day? Remember, pushing something off in the future, creating more future possibilities, uh, that will help you down the, down the line in terms of building that future pipeline. Hosting a webinar, offering valuable information in the form of an online webinar is a great way to generate leads from the people who actually sign up for the webinar. This is especially useful when money matters because it's even easier to develop an educational content for a wide audience. This works as long as you're able to put together interesting and valuable information. What about your lost customers? I suppose this isn't quite generating leads, but it's a way to go back and do what we're trying to do. Fill the pipeline, keep the calendar full, but how hard are you really working those lists of former clients, former customers? Sometimes it's hard to market to people you've already lost, but as long as you didn't part ways in a horribly explosive tirade, there's always a chance they'll come back. And a lot of times people thought the grass was greener on the other side and it wasn't. So you have a chance to come back. Your old customers can be some of the most valuable leads that you actually have in your business or your book of business. Job change notifications, like we talked about, lots of people are on the move. If you pay attention to platforms like LinkedIn, you'll notice messages in your newsfeed every time one of your connections changes jobs. There are several reasons why a person would be changing jobs and that can create a sales lead. Just remember to say congratulations and lead in the conversation before going into directly how you might be able to assist them. What about Q&A websites? You know, sign up for websites like Reddit or Cura and where you will find that people are asking and answering questions. Obviously, this is information people are interested about. You can get involved in the insurance related discussions. You may generate leads from the individual people you help, but it's more likely that other people with the same questions will come across your answers in the future and then seek out your help. Donations for assessments. This works with two different parties. They both get what they want. Offer to donate a certain amount of money to a charity for every assessment during a certain period of time. Don't just choose a charity and donate money for the leads you would have received anyway. Find a charity that will push its supporters uh, towards you. Check how many Facebook fans they have and make sure they use social media uh, to push more your way. Ask if they have a member list with phone numbers. Remember, if you're making those charitable contributions, they're getting what they want. If you're getting assessments, you're getting what you want. Mutually beneficial relationship. Starting a blog. If you don't already have a website that makes it easy for you to blog, then you should create your own. The amazing thing about the internet is that it leads 
will find you when you have answers to their problems or their questions and you publish those online. A blog is simply the easiest way to generate and publish content that hopefully people are looking for. Establish lead generation goals. It's a common mistake in sales to set goals based around sales instead of goals around the actions that lead to the sales. Creates very specific goals for generating leads, like I wanna generate one brand new lead from a stranger every day, or I wanna capture one X date from an existing customer every day. Just like all the rest of your goals, be specific and make sure they're attainable. But getting in your client's cell phones, this is very important. The ability to be found very quickly is important. People who don't have your information handy are less likely to refer leads to you. Pretty simple. That makes uh, sense, right? And the more clients walking around with your number and your cell phone, the better the chances of getting a new lead referred over to you. It's easy to encourage since most people will agree that having their professional's phone number in their phone is a great thing. But if you don't push, it's not going to happen. The lead nurturing process. Obviously, different leads require different approaches. Develop a process that nurtures the relationship. For example, if you know a lead's ex date is six months away, send them a couple of helpful emails between now and then and a letter at the beginning of the month explaining you'll be calling them on a specific date. If you touch them three to five times without pushing them for a sale, that could lead uh, to a much warmer transaction, conversation, appointment, and um, sales. And then finally, change the conversation. This is one of the most interesting ways to accomplish what we're talking about today. Even people that are thinking about buying things like insurance, like we talked about early on, they're not really that interested in talking about insurance. Where does that leave the typical agent? In a position where they can dramatically change their business if they learn how to change some of the upfront conversation and communication to develop more of a yes formula. If you look at the top of your funnel, you want to try to develop a yes formula to get as many people interested in whatever you're offering at the top of the funnel as possible. That helps create the rest of what we're looking for. Different cycles of communication, different uh, people in different parts of the pipeline, qualified books, appointments, revenue, income, growth. It all starts with making sure that front end gets as much activity, action, and interest as possible. You want more information on building, operating, and managing agencies in the 21st century? Agency in Motion Educational Series.